Hi everyone, warm welcome back to the channel. And today we are back on Project Poirot. <laughs> we are gonna be carrying on with the clutch job on this, getting all the jobs done. I'm not sure which order we're gonna be doing them in yet, but um, we're gonna crack through them and hopefully get this thing back on the road where it should be again, or at least starting to get it back on the road where it should be again. So without further ado, let's crack on with these jobs and get it all done. Right, it's the next day. We're back under the MX-5. That's a bit of luck, look, I picked the right size socket for a change. So we've got to take the clutch off now. We've got 14 mils, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we can get the clutch off and see what sort of state that's in. Once we get the clutch off, we can then take the flywheel off um, because we've got to change the pilot bearing and also want to change, as I said before, the rear main oil seal on the engine. Now, I've just noticed up here, we can see that in the camera, I'm not sure you can, but there, there is a bit of an oil leak by the looks of it, and I'm not sure where that's coming from, or what component that is actually, it's like the end cap on the cam shaft by the looks of it, so I'm going to have a little look at that, because obviously I want to seal that up while I'm around here, because that looks like it's leaking all down, that's probably why the gear, top of the gearbox was so wet, so that may be a red herring as to what, as to why the clutch is leaking. This is the pipe that um, I was suspecting was iffy on the clutch um, we will do a bit more of an inspection on that in a minute um, to obviously see I may change it anyway just par for the course while I'm in here because I don't want to be doing this again so I'm going to buzz this off and I'll come back to you once I've got the clutch off Right, clutch is off, as you just saw, and there's not a lot of meat left on that. You can see that on there. It is almost down to the rivets, so we've done the right thing, definitely changing this clutch. The pilot, pilot bearing is not very healthy, but it feels very gritty. Um, and you can maybe hear that. doesn't sound very nice at all so we've definitely done the right thing changing this clutch so next thing I'm going to take off is the flywheel which is these bolts here now I'm lucky to have an, lucky enough to have an impact gun um, if you haven't got an impact gun you will need to maybe put a bolt back in the case in here and um, put like a, a pry bar or something in the teeth of the flywheel to obviously stop it turning because if you try and put any pressure on this it's just going to turn the engine around so but I'm going to use a windy gun on this because obviously it's it's there and it's a lot easier as you just saw from me taking the clutch off so we'll get this off and then we can see what sort of um, condition that rear main seals in let's carry on right there we are flywheels off and looking at it, this is the rear main seal here, obviously this is the crankshaft. It doesn't actually look like it's really leaking, to be honest with you, but we're going to change it anyway because I've got a new genuine Mazda one to put in, so we're going to put a new one in. Most of this oil all looks to be coming from that, um, so that's going to be um, my next investigation, I think, because while the flywheel and everything's off, it's easy to get to. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to have a clean up, clean all the oil off, we'll replace this main seal, and then we're going to look at that. Let's carry on. Right here, I've cleaned up that um, surface at the back. And I've also resealed that bit that was leaking above it, which has actually turned out to be um, coolant uh, housing, so I've got water over me. <laughs> but I've sealed all that back up, that's all done. This is the new, genuine Mazda rear main seal. So I'm going to get under there now, get the old one out, and then we'll put this new one in. And then we can change the pilot bearing on the flywheel and get that back on. Let's carry on. Let's get a screwdriver. See if we can pop it out this way. Oh, that's a bit easier. I didn't think it was going to come out that easy. There we go. That's popped it. Oh well, we didn't need to drill it after all. That's good. There you go. Rear main out. Now we can pop 
the new one in. That's good. Lovely jubbly. I'm going to give that a little clean. Just make sure there's no mank in there. And what I'll do, I'll give the new seal a little bit of a spray up with some WD-40 just to give it a little bit of slip. And we'll use this old gasket, sorry, old seal I should say, to bang in the new one. Let me grab. Not sure where the new one is. <laughs> Anyone normally would have just bought it under a wheel, but I didn't, so I'm going to have to go and get it. I'll come back to you in a sec. Right. We've got the new seal. Yep. You can see that? Yep. I'll give it a little bit of a spray, just to give it a little bit of uh, lubrication. Made it going in, didn't it? That's if my WD-40 decides to work. Why is that not working? It's not clicked up properly, that's why. There you go. Just want a little bit run around the edge. So obviously uh, give it a bit of slip and also more importantly around the ceiling surface in the middle too because you don't want to be rucking that up um, so then obviously it won't seal. I'll give that a little bit as well, just sprayed it all over myself. Obviously you want to get it started on there nice like that. It's not gone in quite square, so you want to try and get it so it goes on square. So you're hitting it on there evenly. Otherwise, it'll go egg shaped and then it definitely won't seal. Right, there we go, that's resting on there now. That's good. Get the old one and a hammer. And gently tap it back in. In fact, you might be able to tap it straight onto the seal. At the moment, just to get it started, use a, a dead blow hammer so it doesn't damage it. That's not going on. Why is that not going on? Come on. Got it started now. And just gradually work your way around. And obviously, don't hit it too hard because you don't want to damage it. And if you've got one of these plastic dead blow hammers, that will help your plight as well. Right now, I've got it so far. I'm going to flip the seal around the old one that is, and then that will allow me to knock it on a bit further without obviously hitting the end of the crankshaft. a little bit of time but you're better off taking your time because you don't want it to go in one key because you definitely don't want to be doing this job twice <laughs> famous last words it's getting there slowly but surely it's a bit of a funny angle I'm trying to do this out and hoping you can still see all right the camera is behind me now so It wants to be just probably about a mil, not even that, under the surface and put it off. Even flush would be alright to be fair. And obviously using the old seal, you know that you're getting a good contact area because the front of it is going to be exactly the same size as the front of the new one. Pretty good. So going a little bit, a little bit more there. Oh, no way. Oh, 
and that will do it I reckon I don't want to go any more than that so that's the new new main rear main installed so now we'll go back out and get the new pilot bearing put in the flywheel and then the flywheel can go back on chop banana let's carry on Rightio, we're back out from underneath the car. Obviously, you can see the flywheel here. Now, I don't know if you could hear it before. Have you ever listened to this bearing? It doesn't sound all that great. I've got the new one here, nice little SKF bearing. And these are not, this is a good make. I, I like using SKF stuff because they tend to be, well, I've always found them to be good quality stuff. Um, can't get out of the box though. <laughs> Too well packaged. <laughs> there we go. It's all sealed in a little bag. Now, if I put my finger in the middle of this one and spin this one. Totally silent. Can't even hear it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this set up on a couple of blocks of wood. You can knock that one out. Knock this one in. And then we can get the flyable back on the car. Let's crack on. Right, I've got this set up. Socket. This is a... What is it? 23 mil impact socket which just happens to be the right size for the edge of that bearing. I'm hoping this is just going to knock out. So I've got it supported on two bits of wood and a gap in the middle so it can drop out the bottom. So we'll see if not we'll have to get it on the press but I'm hoping let's have a go. There we go. Hit me thumb in the process but still that wasn't too bad was it? Lovely. Right so the new one now. I've got a, I usually do it with the writing outwards, I don't know why, just do. <laughs> Me being a bit anal maybe, I don't know. But I'm going to use the old bearing because I know it's exactly the same size and we can just gently tap that in hopefully and it'll be alright. Now you can use just I've just started off with that now I'm going to use this um, socket just because it's a bit taller so I can hold it easier so I wasn't going to end up hitting my thumb. You don't go too mad with it, you just want it so it's flush with the top of the front of the flywheel. I have also cleaned this flywheel up as well so it's not got any grease or mank on it anymore. It's got a few little burn marks on it from friction obviously, but it's hundred percent flat so more taps a bit more don't want to go too far there we go that's the new pilot bearing in how uh, quiet that is in comparison to the other one. Lovely. So, that can go back in now. Let's carry on. Okay, back under the car again we are. <laughs> I'm going to be using a little bit of Loctite on the bolts to obviously make sure they don't come undone. So we'll put that on as we go. Let's get this flywheel up. This flywheel isn't the lightest thing in the world, I have to say. Get that hook, I'm going to get it hooked in the middle on the bearing where the bearing goes in. It does stick out the other side very slightly. Um, and then we can get a, once we get one bolt in it, it makes it easier. Just putting a bit of um, thread lock on the first one so I can get it started. And then I can use two hands in to obviously uh, put the others in. Now this has got to be torqued up. 75 foot pounds I've just looked it up make sure so I'll use the windy gun on it just to buzz them up and then I'll check them with a torque wrench after obviously don't want to go too mad with it um, I may have to use the technique of putting the bolt in one of the um, side bolts here so I can wedge a, a crowbar in the tooth just to stop it turning when anyway, I torque it up so that shouldn't be too bad so you just want to I'm using this is a high strength thread lock you just put a little bit on the thread on one side it'd be fine because obviously it works its way around when you do it up. 
Just what I mean. And it's as simple as that. Obviously you always start them off with your fingers first because you don't want to do them with a windy gun and do the threads in. wrench and we'll just check them it might even be that the windy gun's done not tight enough but I'll check them anyway because you, you don't want your flywheel flying off when you're going down the road do you at whatever speed yeah it's turning so, so as I thought right let's get a bolt there we go You put a bolt in one of the holes, a few threads, and then you try and turn it, obviously it'll stop it from moving, hopefully. So I see anyway. Just want to work out the best way for it to lock in. As I thought, these are already tight enough, but it's worth checking. I don't realise how powerful those windy guns are. They do uh, a fair bit of torque. I'm just going to go around them twice to make sure. So I don't want them to be wrong. Lovely jubbly. Right, now we can get the clutch on. So I'm going to come back out and I'll show you the difference between the new and the old clutch so you can see the difference. Right, as you saw, this is the old clutch. I have no idea if it's original or not. Um, it's got a mark in there, DK. Don't know who they are, never heard of them. Um, probably just about to see that on the camera maybe. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much had it, I think. Now this one I've got is back box as an AC Delco, but when you look inside, the pressure plate is actually Valio. It says it on there, look, see Valio, which I was kind of pleased about because I quite like Valio stuff. I tend to find it's quite good, and you can see the difference in thickness the two clutches there's quite a big difference there so hopefully that's going to make the clutch look better on this car obviously it comes with a new pressure plate which is AC Delco on it funny enough don't know why <laughs> um, so that's AC Delco and the clutch friction plate is uh, Valio it's got the same amount of it's interesting different amount of fingers on it look that one's got all little ones and that one's got less big ones so I don't know how that's going to affect it. Um, we'll just find out when we do it. And we've got the new release bearing in there as well, which is obviously goes in the gearbox side. We won't worry about that for a minute because that's obviously on the gearbox itself, and we'll do that when we clean the gearbox up. So I think uh, we need to get this put in and uh, torque down, and obviously get it centered as well because that's going to be um, obviously make it easier to get the gearbox back in once we've got it in because obviously you don't want you don't get it central 
and you're in a whole world of pain so right I'm gonna get back under the car and we'll get this fitted let's crack on right then let's get this clutch in we'll be using one of these which is a clutch alignment tool now that bit there goes in the middle of your friction plate and then you tighten up the end nut to splay out the um, little tabs on it and then once that's tight you then use this collared part to centralize it in the middle of the pressure plate and that hopefully will give it make it central on the pilot bearing as well and it'll be marvelous so we've got three little dowel pins this goes on here like that get your clutch alignment tool and then tighten that up so that it's in there like that and that allows you to move the pressure uh, the, uh, the friction plate around inside you see so obviously now when you tighten up this it will centralize it because obviously being a cone that will centralize it you see don't, want it, don't have to go too mad that should be it so now that's, ha that's actually holding that on there so now that then allows me two hands to get me locked tight my bolts start putting them in and hopefully that will be good right that's all in talked up only 20 foot pounds on those so not very much so now we need to get out from under the car and start looking at the actual gearbox itself giving that a damn good clean and replacing a couple of seals on it and then we can think about putting it back in way right as you can see this gearbox is pretty gross now I don't know where all this oil and stuff has come from but I have got a new seal which goes behind this um, plate here I'm pretty sure it's that one I've got and also I've got a new um, end shaft um, seal as well I've got to find them yet but the first thing I'm going to do is give this a really good clean and get rid of all this manky oil out of it and everything else because we don't want that going on our nice new clutch do we so I'm going to crack on with that and I'll come back to you Right, as you can see there the inside of the bell housing is all now looking a lot better and a nicer colour and not all greasy and horrible now we have got to take this housing off um, which is obviously these one two three four five six bolts there and I've got a new gasket to go behind there um, to hopefully stop any oil leaks now I don't know whether all this mess inside here was from the engine oil the clutch fluid or whether it was actually leaking gearbox fluid through here um, I've also got this seal which goes on the rear of the gearbox again genuine Mazda seal so we're going to pop this housing off and obviously clean all that up get a new gasket on there a little bit of um, probably put a little bit of seal on either side of that gasket just to make double sure it seals and I've got to work out where this seal goes as well so I'm going to buzz that off and I'll come back to you There we go, with that off, you can see that that ceiling ring goes just inside here. So I'm gonna have to leave that one out, put the new one in. And obviously the gasket goes inside here. There's the old one you can see. Hopefully that will peel off all in one go. Possibly not, might have to get a blade on it to get the remnants of any bits that are left over on top of there. I don't know, it's coming off fairly nicely actually. One little bit stuck just there. Oh, there we go. One little tiny piece. And cope with that that's the old gasket off i'll give that surface a nice clean up in there obviously give this one a clean up maybe with a bit of um, scotch pad and some brake cleaner we install that new seal or we'll fit that new seal in there i should say and then we can put it back on lovely jubbly okay i've given that surface a nice clean up in there with a scotch pad and a bit of uh, panel wipe same with this one now i'm assuming that this seal will just pop out if i get a screwdriver or trim tool oh, not the camera I'm hoping not the camera again hoping this will just pop out any luck may have to get a flat bladed screwdriver in there that's so it like that out of there hopefully there we go it's coming 
once you break the seal it should pop out there we go so now we can tap the new one in there I'll give that a little wipe round it's quite clean in there anyway there we go nice and clean we'll get the new one tapped in obviously same as before we'll get a um, socket of a similar size or we could actually use the original seal to tap it in with I mean I don't know it might even just push in quite easily if I get a little bit of um, WD-40 on it like same as we did with the other one all helps with a bit of um, lubrication it may even just push in once a little bit of a tap down but it's in there look you can see that's in there so I'm gonna give that a little bit of a tap down I'll put the old one on top of it where's my hammer over there The old one on top and just give it a little bit of a tap. So, so to make sure it's all the way home. And if you're using the old one, you should not give any damage to the new one because it's not receiving any impact as such, it's just being pushed gently down. So you want to try and hit it on the outer edge of the seal because that's the bit that's effectively going in that sounded like that went home then that's good spin it round do that side it's going in slightly wonky but that'd be fine it's only very minute you can hear the sound change when you get to the bottom of the groove there you go new one installed so that should be good to go that is a genuine Mazda seal on there so that should last many more miles hopefully right I'm gonna get some sealer and we'll stick this gasket to there so I know it's in exactly the right place in fact I might uh, yeah I'll stick it to there because it's got a little ridge around it it can sit on as well and then we can put this back on and get it bolted back up let's carry on Well, yeah, that's now all installed, torqued up. I've done it to 25 newton meters. I wasn't sure of the torque sitting on that, but 25 newton meters, sorry, 25 foot pounds seemed more than enough for that. So that's all on there, sealed, new seal in. Now we can flip the gearbox around and do the other end. Um, there's a new seal I want to change on the other end. So I'll flip it around, I'll come back to you. Okay, I've actually flipped the gearbox on its end for this bit because it would be easier. This is the seal we need to change, which is where the prop shaft pushes into. Again, another new genuine Mazda part to go in there so we need to work that one out it has got like a metal um, let me get this out of the bag and I'll show you it's got like a metal collar around the new one which is the same as the old one so we should be able to get a um, flat headed screwdriver or a bar in there and just tap that up out and uh, tap the new one in should be fairly straightforward let's crack on Okay, that's both end seals changed on the gearbox. So now we are on to cleaning up the rest of the mess that's all over the casing, as you can see down there. It is pretty gross where it's been leaking for quite a while by the looks of it. So I'm gonna give that a big clean up and then we can think about starting getting it back in the car. Top banana, let's carry on.
There we go, that's one gearbox fully cleaned. I know it's not shiny, but it's no oil on it anymore. So at least it won't cover me in rubbish when I put it back in the car. I have got new uh, gaiters to go on here. There's a gaiter that goes underneath and there's also the one that I told you about earlier that goes inside the car, I've got those on order. They're coming. It's had a new seal at the top, as you saw. It's had a new seal inside the bell housing, as you saw in the gasket, so that's all good to go. So it is ready to go back in the, in the car now, we're waiting on. Although I've got a clutch release bearing down here, a new one, it's not branded and I know it's a bit sort of daft maybe but I didn't fancy putting a non-branded clutch release bearing back in after having gone to all this trouble and didn't want to have any grief and have to take it back out again so I've ordered a genuine Mazda one so that's on its, on its way, as soon as that gets here we can get that fitted with the clutch arm that's down here and then we can get it back in the car top banana Rightio, we've had a delivery from the postman woohoo so we've got a new clutch flexi line it's a braided one new genuine this time uh, clutch release bearing the boot that goes inside the car that goes around the gear stick and we've also got the inner boot which goes in around the gear stick but underneath the car effectively it's got a gasket on it to stop it leaking because at the moment it's seeping oil out and a new bush for the gear stick as well so that should make the gear shifting nice and precise and positive again so the first thing i'm going to do before we touch any of this though is i want to get the mazda a bit higher because on them ramps it, i did struggle getting the gearbox out so i want to, i've got some big lumps of wood i'm going to put jack it up put them under the ramps and then get it up a bit higher so we'll do that first and then we'll carry on right this is what i've come up with it's a little bit sketchy, but it's not moving, so that's all right. So basically, we've got two long lengths of wood underneath the, sorry, underneath the ramp, I should say, and then a small piece on top of the ramp, and that has given me a lot more height, so I can now get under the front of the car a lot easier, and the gearbox will actually fit under there now, which is always always good. So next thing we're going to do is fit this new clutch release bearing in our freshly cleaned gearbox. So let's carry on with that. I'll get you set up on a tripod. And we'll do that okay so we've got our clean gearbox we've got our cleaned clutch release arm i purposely left the back of that bit greasy see where this little spring clip is in the middle here because that clicks over this ball and that's the pivot point for the clutch arm so that obviously wants to be greasy so i'm going to put a little dob of grease on there before we put it back on um this obviously is the new release bearing I may have just done a bit overboard here getting a genuine one, but I just didn't like the look of the one that came with the clutch. So that's a, a nice new release bearing there. So we'll get a little bit of grease, put that on that ball so it's nice and covered like that. And this has to slot through this rubber boot on the side. like that and then this slides onto your clutch arm like that and goes over there oh. get that centralised and then when you push it back it clicks on and that is your clutch arm on there your bearing on there so that can't, can't come off now because obviously it's around the back of the arm this can't come off because it's clicked onto that little ball and obviously it's through the boot there on the side and obviously when you operate the pedal it pushes that in and out like that and it's as simple as that so that is now the gearbox ready to go back in now I want to get underneath the car and 
make sure that everything that I can get to while the gearbox is out is all cleaned. Also, I've got that new um, clutch uh, flexi hose I want to fit because it's easy to get, easier to get to that with the gearbox out. So we're going to do that next and then we'll get on to the main event, putting this back in. Let's crack on. Right, one end of the flexi hose is here. The other end is connected to the hard line that goes to the slave. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this end off. That will then release the whole lot out of the car. That will make it easier for me to get the other end off in the vise. Um, and then we can get the new one fitted. Now, I've just literally touched this with a spanner and it actually came undone straight away, which I was very shocked about because I thought it was going to fight me. It's probably been there forever. And it has released really easy. I put a little bit of WD-40 on it and no problem at all. So I'll get this undone. It looks like it's going to take a little while because I can only get a spanner in there a quarter of a turn at a time. So I'll get this off and I'll come back to you when I've got it on the bench and we can fit the new one to the hard line that goes to the slave. Come back to you in a minute. Okay, assembly's out. Now, I'm not still not sure what to do with this slave cylinder because it was a new slave cylinder probably about a year ago. So I don't know whether to leave that be for the minute um, and see if it still leaks because obviously if you change everything in one go, you never know what the problem was in the first place. So I'm wondering whether I should leave that and just change the hose on this end for now and see, I'll see how it goes. Now with this, obviously you've got a bracket there. It's got like a spring clip in it and then this line just bolts in. So what I'm gonna do is just clamp that in the vise just to make things a little bit easier. And hopefully, because this is all covered in mank, it should just undo, because the other end did. Probably won't now, now I'm on the bench. Ah, there we go. That broke free fairly easily, and you can see it's nice and free on the pipe here, which is good, because a lot of times, especially with, more, more with brake hoses, because obviously they get a bit more road salt and stuff on them being where they are on the car this nut tends to bind up on the pipe and if you start twisting the pipe obviously it knackers the pipe so in that case if it does give you a lot of resistance I always find a little bit of heat and then sp spray some WD-40 on after you've heated it because it obviously is expanded slightly um, and it allows the WD-40 just to get in that tiny little gap that's been formed by the heat and obviously lubricate the thread now it might take a couple of goes, there you go, it's like I'm done really easy, don't look at that, Fred's lovely on it. Uh, it might take a couple of goes heating it up and spraying and heating it up and spraying, but usually they do come undone. So, little tip for you there, if you ever have any problems with brake pipes, you don't want to end up snapping a pipe. Because no one wants to do that, do they? Right, this should just pop off here, yep, a little slidey clip, like that, and then that should just put out, there we go. It was easy, wasn't it? I'm still not sure whether this hose is any good or not, but it don't look great to me so I'm going to change it and obviously putting a braided one on um, will give a, a better clutch feel anyway a little wipe nice and clean right there's a new one hopefully it will just fit in but obviously it's not standard as such so Cap off the end of it. Oh, I mess on the tight. Right, let's put that in there. Go through. That's the question. It might want a little bit of modification to that bracket. It might just be that plastic clip that's or the plastic cap that's not letting it through. If it's, if it's screwed in there, it is. <laughs> Make it hard for yourself, Mike. It's screwed in there. <laughs> All right. Let's see if it fits in there. It goes in there. Lovely now. Look. Give that quick little wipe up. It should just slide back in. Hopefully. There you go. Holds it in there nice and tight. That fits nice. That. Actually, I was a bit worried that that wasn't going to fit straight into the original bracket, but yeah, so that's good. Get that right home because then it's. Oh, get that right home because then it's supported. Um, all the way around that U then rather than just the sides holding it. Having said that, it was a bit tighter being like that. It's 
not going to go anywhere anyway, so that'll be fine. Or I'll just bend that a little bit, give it a little bit more tension on it. And then that'll uh, hold it in there tighter then. Like that. That's better. So now, in theory, this pipe should should just screw straight back on here. Clean that first. Mank off the thread. That's going to be the word of the day, I think. Mank, because everything's manky. Everything's manky on this in this car. Might want a little bit of more of a, oh, a brake fluid coming out everywhere now. Where does that come from? There it goes. Yeah, the brake fluid washed the threads out, that was handy. <laughs> That's now on there nice and tight. So now that can go back on the car, but I'm just wondering actually, it was that easy to get off that um, it might be worth putting the gearbox in first because I can winkle this around the gearbox rather than trying to having to winkle the gearbox around this, if that makes sense. So yeah, I may change tact on that and leave this out. Now we've got the pipe on it and we can thread it through to the other side once the gearbox is in. That might be a good idea, I think. Save. So uh, Obviously trying to put the gearbox in and then get this in the way of the, of the two mating surfaces because it did, does dangle down a bit in that in that gap. Just making sure while I've got it out that there aren't actually any holes or any musty bits in this coil of pipe. You can see out there. Just having a look at that to make sure there's no seeping bits that could be leaking. There's a few little tiny bits of corrosion but nothing nothing substantial right I think I'm going to get on the gearbox I'll come back to you in a minute right I'm not going to lie this is the second attempt to at getting this gearbox in because the first time I got it in but it would not go into the pilot bearing so I did fear this when I used that clutch alignment tool I'm not that um, happy with that tool to be honest with you it's a bit hit and miss so I've actually um, done my best to align the clutch plate by eye this time and hopefully we might have a bit more luck so I'm going to get underneath the car and see if we can get this gearbox in which is not going to be easy it's blooming heavy <laughs> times like this you need an assistant and I haven't got one I'm on my own so I've got to do what I can to get it back in and hope that it works Got the, got the power bar to contend with and the blooming exhaust hanging down so it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Right, let's try this. See what we can do. Forgive me if I don't talk all the way through this, I'm going to be using a lot of energy to lift this thing up. Lovely, absolutely lovely. That was a struggle. Right, let's get this power bar up. But no, let's get a jack under it. Don't mess about. Get something to support it. Right, yeah, as you can see there now, I've got all the bolts, all the gearbox bolts back in, starter bolts are back in, 
the all the little clips on the side for the wiring is back in speedo cables back in the two plugs on the top of the gearbox which you can't see up here are back in the power plant um, structure is back in or back connected I should say with these three bolts and the one at the back which you can't see at the moment so we are making good progress next thing I'm going to do now is uh, one of the bolts on the prop shaft snapped when I've done it so I'm going to get out and um, find a replacement for that and then we can fit the prop shaft um, and then once once that's in um, all the gearbox side of things under here is then done um, apart from filling it up with oil which I've got to do and then we've got to sort out this exhaust because obviously when I've done, done this exhaust as you can see just there the studs snapped in the um, back of the cap there so I've got to get those out um, either with a lot of heat or whatever wind them out or if I can knock them out or which I'm not sure whether they're screwed in or just pushed in or what but whatever I do I've got to get those out so I can obviously bolt the new exhaust manifold back on so we're, uh, we're getting there slowly but surely it's, I've not um, of a time lapse of me putting all the bolts back in the gearbox because it was basically the reverse of what I did earlier and it's not that interesting and it's quite difficult to obviously get me in there and a camera at the same time so I'm going to uh, say go and sort this bolt out for the prop shaft and then we'll get that put in. Let's carry on. Okay as you can see there the prop shaft's now back in. It pushes in this end into the new seal and that end is the four bolts which bolts onto the axle which I've obviously replaced one of because it snapped when we took it out. Now while we're under here I'm going to refill the gearbox oil which as I showed you before is done via this plug here which is a 14 mil spanner we have already loosened that off previously and we've got the finest castrol to go back in it again it does come with like a little sort of uh, end on the uh, bottle there so hopefully aid refilling so basically just uh, stick it in that fill hole and squeeze it until it dribbles out that's the theory anyway Whoop. Now usually, I do find these tend to come with a slightly longer nozzle than that, but anyway, it still allows you to squeeze it in as you can see I'm doing there. <clears throat> Hopefully I'll be able to get it all in there. I'd like to get a bit more angle on this bottle if I can, but I may have to get a different bottle to squeeze it in there with, because I have got a... Um, a bottle that I keep with a longer nozzle on it to obviously uh, aid filling areas like this if you can get a bit of upward angle on it obviously that will aid it a bit right, I'm not getting much out of this so I think I'm going to get the other bottle with a longer, longer nozzle on it because that isn't very long that one and I'll show you what I mean come back to you in a second Right, as you can see I've swapped this into a different bottle. Ignore what it says on the bottle because I poured it in from the castrol tube and you see the long tube this has got on it. Hopefully that will give us enough to be able to squeeze this in and where we are. Did get a fair bit of it in with that other can to be fair. Just not quite enough to get it all in. So hopefully this one might do it. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to think of something different. Long piece of hose or something. <laughs> There we go, it's now dribbling out as you can see. That means it is at the right level. So it did take a little bit more than two litres, more like two and three quarters, but we are there, which is good. Wipe that off. I think what I must have looked up must have been a bit wrong on the old uh, capacity, because that you should have to do it until that you see that spill out like that so there we go right that is now full so now we can go top side and we'll sort out the fluid in the uh, gear shift turret okay next step now we're inside the car is you can see inside here there is some oil this is obviously the gear stick turret I'm going to use this uh, pet thing to he says head back in the camera suck all the old oil out of here hopefully not spilling any in the car because it's 
pretty gross as you can see there should be about 100 mil of oil in here supposedly um, I'm willing to bet there's not that much and if there is it's not going to be very nice so this is a bit of a messy job obviously uh, it's worth doing while you're in here because Gone to the trouble of changing all the other gearbox oil. I might as well do this bit as well because I would say this bit probably gets forgotten more than likely. It takes a little while because obviously you don't get it all out every time you go, and it does uh, leave a bit behind and drip a bit as well. I would have thought so. You get the idea. I'm going to carry on doing this until it's not got any more in it, and then we'll refill it with some nice fresh stuff. Come back to you in a minute. Okay, all the old oil's out of there now. Now, supposedly this takes 90 mil to fill this up, which isn't a lot, so I've got this little pot here. This is 50 mil. So I'm going to put this one in, and then we'll refill it. And, uh, Put the rest in hopefully preferably without spilling it everywhere and that does actually look quite full already so i'm wondering whether i should leave it at that because chances are that possibly could be a bit over 50 mil i think i might leave it at that it's just underneath that collar there so i think that'll be about right as long as it covers all the workings which it does obviously it needs to cover this bush and give this ball a little bit of lubrication on these bushes which it will i think we'll call that done so that's all right i thought that was going to be a couple of goes of that but having looked at that i think that's going to be okay okay i got a little uh, electrical screwdriver not necessarily the right tool for the job but should do the trick pop that off of there there we go all right so that's the old one off and the new one's just here exactly the same just clicks back on um, I'd say probably just push that against something hard, pop it on. Let me see that there, can you? He says. <laughs> there we go, new one on. And that one was certainly a lot harder to push on than the old one was to pull off. So it shows you how worn that old one was. It didn't look warm, but I think it must have been. So that's a nice new bush on the end of the gear stick there now. We've got to put a new bush on this bit, and then we can put this new boot on, which is there. Only problem is, I haven't got that bush. It flew off in the garage somewhere, and I've had the whole garage apart trying to find it, and I cannot find it, so I'm gonna to have to get a new one. So that may be have to be our stopping point for now, unless I manage to get one in time before this video has got to go out <laughs> so I will come back to you either with a finish to the video or with this bush that we've got to put on here see you in a minute now before you put the boot on here you have to put this bush on now I lost this I lost this bush when I took it off and I've had the whole garage apart trying to find it and do you think I can find it can I fairy cakes so I've got myself a new one it comes with a spring washer and obviously that sandwiches between that bottom bush in there I've cleaned all that bottom bush up there's nothing wrong with that so that's fine um, there's also this ring here which will go on there puts a little bit of pressure on that wavy spring washer so that's that sits in there like that and then this lovely new boot with the new gasket on the bottom slides on and then bolts down on that top of there to hold it all together and that is about it that will be all we need to do on the gearbox side of things as far as um, changing oil and putting it back together so the next thing after this is going to be um, bleeding the clutch I would say so yeah I'll get this fitted and I'll come back to you in a minute okay there we go new uh, boot is on new bush is on with the spring washer and the flat washer underneath that that little slot there slots into that pin at the front of the gearbox hole so in theory that all should just go back in and be nice hopefully 
and we should be able to change gear like a Winchester rifle now. Assuming this slots back in all right. Yeah, the little slot. There it is. So obviously line it up, get it so that it slips in. There we go, like that. We've got these three bolts that bolt it down, three 10 mils, same as we took it out. And that should be that. Yeah. Done up. A little bit of seepage out the sides. I've obviously tightened it down and the oil's maybe slightly too high. Nothing we can't just wipe off quickly. And that gasket should seal up hopefully. It'll do its job. Stop the oil coming out. Now obviously we haven't got a clutch at the moment so. Seems to change gear all right. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, reverse. Lovely jubbly. Hell yeah. Rightio, you can see in there now, the outer boot is now bolted back down as well. So that is, uh, apart from the centre console going back in, that's job done. So next thing's gonna be to uh, bleed the clutch, I guess, and see, uh, see what sort of pedal we get. Let's carry on. Okay, as you can see there, on adding some fluid into the system again, it is quite apparent that that slave cylinder is kaput and no more. So, that is gonna need to be ordered, um, and hopefully that will complete the uh, job on the clutch. Now, we have still got to sort the exhaust out, but that is gonna be a job for another day, I think. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Not quite the end I was hoping for. I was hoping to have a working clutch, but there we go. These things happen. Right then, that is gonna be it for this episode on Project Poirot. Got to make sure I say it right. <laughs> um, we've got a lot done, as you've seen. Everything's back together, barring the exhaust and now a leaking slave cylinder. That's an easy fix, so that's okay. I'll sort out a new part for that, um, hopefully for the next episode. I'm not sure what the next video is gonna be on Mechtech, but Rest assured there will be one same time next week, 6 p.m. Friday. Um, if you do want to catch me during the week, you can check for updates on the Facebook page, mech-tech, or on Instagram, mech underscore tech 1985. If you do like what you see on the channel, please consider subscribing. Remember, it's free. Give me a little thumbs up. That would uh, help out a lot as well. Um, if you want to join me soon for more automotive adventures, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks very much guys, cheers.